Over the past 12 months, my main option account has beaten the S&P 500 by 18.71%. In this video, I'm going to show you all the numbers in my main ops trading account from the past 12 and 24 months. Then I'm going to share with you the cash flow that we received last month in November from selling options and collecting dividends in this same main ops trading account. That will enable you to see how you too can use options to beat market returns. So I already showed you how we have absolutely destroyed the market over the past 12 months when it comes to return. However, there are other important numbers to consider besides just return. For example, here you see the max drawdown of this account. Notice that with our ops trading strategy of selling cash secure put options, doing covered calls, doing poor man's covered calls, as well as risk reversals, and some other ops trading strategies, our max drawdown of the past 12 months was 17.69%. We can compare that to the SP 500, whose max drawdown was 24.5%. So again, our ops trading strategy beat the SP 500 by 6.8% when it comes to max drawdown. Now, if it doesn't bother you when your account plummets in value, then maybe max drawdown isn't important to you. But for most traders, they prefer to see their account have a more stable, consistent movement if they're able to achieve the same return. Or in the case of the past 12 months, we've actually done it with a better return. Now, these next two are ones that some people are not familiar with, but they are very important and you should know them. But I'm going to keep them very simple for you. You know I like things simple and brief. Well, here's what the sharp ratio is. In short, you want the sharp ratio of your portfolio to be higher rather than lower. The higher the sharp ratio, the better you're being compensated for taking additional risk. Or another way to look at it, the higher the sharp ratio, the better the investment is in terms of risk adjusted returns. It's that simple. So you want a high sharp ratio number. Here you see that the sharp ratio of my main option trading account over the past 12 months was 0.34. And that's definitely higher than the negative 0.45 for the S&P 500. And finally, we have standard deviation. Now, simply put, you want standard deviation to be as small as possible. You see, if you have a small standard deviation, you tend to have more consistent returns. So there won't be as many dramatic highs and dramatic lows in your returns. Your returns will be more smoothed out or closer together. With standard deviation, you want that number to be as low as possible. Here you see the standard deviation of this main ops trading account was 1.38%. Compare that to the higher S&P 500, which was 1.49%. Let's dig in a little more to see what happened on a daily basis over the past 12 months. Here you see the past year broken down by returns for each day. The green bars, the S&P 500, and the blue bars are our main ops trading account. Notice that the S&P 500 had two down days there were between 4% and 6%. We only had one. The S&P 500 had 20 days that showed between a 2 and 4% loss. We had 19. The S&P 500 had 116 days with a 0 to 2% loss. We had less at 101. Now we move on to the positive return days. These are the ones that we like. The S&P 500 had 99 days between 0 and 2% and we had more at 119 days. The S&P 500 had 23 days with a return between two and 4%, we had 21. So as you can see, we dominated the SP 500 and zero to 2% up days, and we had quite a bit less down days, including those bigger down days that you definitely don't like to see. So we can confidently say that over the past 12 months, we've absolutely beaten the market in every possible way, return and risk. And as you can see, it's been a tough 12 months. Over the past 12 months, the S&P 500 is down over 11%. So our ops trading strategy works and beats the market when the market is going down. But what about when there's a very strong bull market? Before I show you our overall numbers for the past two years, let's take a look at the very strong bull market run from December of 2020 to the end of November 2021. That's a 12 month period. As you can see, the S&P 500 was up over 24% during that time frame, so it was a very strong bull market. So how did our ops trading strategy perform during that time frame? Here you see the details of our main ops trading account for the time frame between December 1st of 2020 through December 30th of 2021. Notice that the S&P 500 was up in total 27.61%. Compare that to our account, which was up 23.6%. So the S&P 500 actually beat us by 4% during this very strong bull run. Under max drawdown, we see the SP 500 had a 5.11% drawdown, and ours was a little bit higher at 5.18%, but not much higher. The SP 500 peak to valley dates were a little bit different. Ours was in November, whereas the SP 500's was in September. 
Now we get to the volatility portion of the portfolios. With the Sharpe ratio, which remember, you want your Sharpe ratio to be as high as possible. The S&P 500 and ours were pretty close with the S&P 500 at 1.72% and ours a little bit lower at 1.68%, so basically the same. And then the standard deviation, which you remember, you want this number to be as low as possible because it means that your returns are more consistent. Here you see the S&P 500 standard deviation was 0.76 and ours was better at 0.65. Now looking at the daily returns, we see that in the big down days, the negative four to negative 2% days, the S&P 500 had six of those days and we only had two. Between negative 2% and 0% days, the S&P 500 had 99 and we only had 96. Now the days that you want, the up days. Notice that with the zero to 2% positive days, the S&P 500 had 154 of those and we had 162 of them. And for the two to 4% days, the SP 500 had one and we didn't have any. So overall, we said in a very strong bull market, owning the SP 500 outright would have beaten our return by about 4%. But our return was still pretty good at 23.6% for the year. And again, our volatility was lower than the SP 500, so our returns were also more consistent. Also remember that with our strategy, we're not depending on the market to go up or down to benefit we receive consistent monthly cash flow from our strategy. So to recap, we dominated the SP 500 in a bear market, but it beat us out by a little bit in a strong bull market. What about the overall past 24 months? What does that look like? And this is a really nice way to look at it because we experienced both a very strong bull and a very strong bear market. When you're trying to find a strategy that you will use for your entire trading career, you want to generate solid returns in both types of markets. Now we're looking at my account information for the past 24 months from December 1st of 2020 through November 30th of 2022. Looking at the daily returns, we see that during this time frame, the SP 500 had two days that were a negative four to negative 6% loss and we didn't have any. And with the negative 4% to negative 2% days, the SP 500 had 26 and we only had 21. For the negative 2% to 0% days, the SP 500 had 215 and we had 197 of them. Now moving on to the ones that you want, the positive days. Now for the days between zero and positive 2%, the S&P 500 had 253 and we had 281. So we had 11% more of those nice up days. And for the big up days between two and 4%, the S&P 500 had 24 and we had 21. And then for the four to 6% up days, the S&P 500 had one. Looking at the overall return during this two year time frame, which include that strong bull and strong bear market, Notice that the SP 500 overall is up 15.93%, and our ops trading account, which I share with my patrons, was up 35.42%. The SP 500 had a bigger drawdown in account value, which was at 24.5%, and ours was a good bit smaller at 17.69%, so our drawdown was 28% less than the SP 500. The peak to valley dates were pretty close between January of 2022 and October of that year. Now here are the numbers that are really important to you if you don't like to see your account value go way down in a bear market. Notice the Sharpe ratio, which remember, you want your Sharpe ratio to be as high as possible. The S&P 500 Sharpe ratio was 0.27, and ours was quite a bit higher at 0.72. And finally, looking at standard deviation, which remember, you want this to be as low as possible because it means your returns are more consistent the S&P 500's standard deviation was 1.19% and ours was a little bit better at 1.08%. So to recap, in a strong bull market in which the S&P 500 was up over 27% it beat our options trading strategy by 4%. But we still managed a very strong return during that time frame of 23.6%. But in a bear market, our strategy absolutely crushed the S&P 500. And during that time, especially during this bear market over the past year, we've taken some of that cash we've been generating by selling options, which I'll show you how much we collected in November in just a second. But during this bear market, we've taken some of that cash from selling options and bought stock outright. In fact, because of all the cash we've pocketed from selling options during this bear market, we've been able to collect over $50,000 in free stock over the past 12 months. Now looking at our November cash flow, because of the bear market we've been in over the past year, we gave up the opportunity to collect more cash and prioritize adjusting quite a few of our positions that we were in to position ourselves better for December. Here you see the net cash we put into our pocket by selling options last month in November. As a result of buying and selling options, we put a net of $8,813 cash into our pocket. Commission cost us $91, data fees were $32, we received $841 in dividends, and we were paid $639 in interest by Interactive Brokers. 
So in all, we put a net of $10,169 cash into our account as a result of trading options. If you run that return based on the approximately $900,000 that we had at risk, it equates to a 13.7% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. If you're curious about what the return was on the margin requirement of $110,000, the interactive broker said that we had to have on average, it equates to a 112% annualized return on margin. If you'd like to see all the trades we did last month in November in this main ops trading account, I post that monthly statement for everyone to see, patrons and non-patrons on my Patreon account. The link is in the description below. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do stock and option trades, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how we use our version of the upgraded option world strategy to generate consistent cash flow every single month, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled, The Option Wheel Strategy Explained. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.